thought I'd come and take a look at this in daylight during my lunch break. The epoxy has gone off and it's basically set like glass. It's pretty incredible stuff. Um, so all of that scuttle area is looking really nice. And where I've dribbled it in, it's come out of my drain plug thing there and filled up all of those voids. So that's never going to rust again because the water simply can't get in there. Even, um, you know, I haven't even waxed all the area yet. So looking good. Evening time again. Quite warm tonight, which is good. That's my donor panel just resting in. What I need to do now is make up the front front edge of that which is like a rain gutter because mine is corroded what i was gonna do is fold up a whole length using my um, clock folder but i'm not sure i can do it because it's in a s bend and the way my folder works you could do 90 degrees dead easy but you can't then fold back in the opposite direction because there's just not enough room to get the metal in the tool. Uh, so then I was going to chop the gutter off this one, but it's a bit frilly on the underside when I looked and it's not long enough to do the whole thing. Um, so now what I'm going to do is just try and make up one side of it and then leave the front side still attached to the car. It'll make sense later when I show you what I'm doing inside. I'm going to have another go at trying to explain what I'm up to because I'm not sure it was clear last time. Basically, I need to make a piece of metal that shape. So it's 90 degree there and then this S bend here. That bit, the forward side on my car is actually quite good. So at the moment, all I've done is cut off about here so theoretically all I need to do is make either an S or a crude 90 degree and then weld that into my car. I'm going to try and do the S because it will make her a neater repair but I don't know whether that's going to be possible so I'm kind of experimenting at the moment. What I've got is my clock foldy tool and I've cut a length of that Zintex steel and I've set it up so that I've got about uh, seven millimeters trapped under there, which will be that bit, seven millimeters. So I'm just gonna bend it up now and hopefully get a nice smooth radius curve. And then I'll set about trying to bend it the other way to make the S, if that's at all possible. I've done the first bit and it struck me that if I shift this in the jaw a bit further out and bend it again, I'll get a nicer curve rather than just having a, a sharp 90 degree, which is what I'll get if I just yank on that at the moment. So I'll adjust it and then do another little bend. Right, so I've sort of made that top bit. Yeah, now I need to try and bend it the other way. I'm not sure whether I'm gonna be able to get that in there, because this bit will be clashing on that bit before it's trapped up tight in there, but we'll have a go. Clamped it up again. My 90 degree return is in there. Uh, so I'm really not sure this is gonna work, but I'm just gonna force this edge up around there and hopefully that will give the beginnings of the curve. Then I can finish it off with a hammer and a chisel if I need to. It kind of worked, but the profile's horrible compared to what I need. It's got a real gradual curve in it, whereas I need quite a sharp bend. But what it has allowed me to do is now put it in the other way around, um, which I couldn't do before. So I'll clamp it in again the other way up and hopefully can make that curve a bit sharper. All right, that didn't really work. I've now got a really strange shape, but it does have two curves in it. So the radiuses aren't right and they're not in the precisely the right place, but I'm just gonna start hitting it with hammers and chisels trying to sharpen up one of the radiuses and move the other one um, but this might take quite a while and it's going to be particularly boring so i'm going to put the radio on and then just set set to work some bashing later we have a better shape it's not great what i've done is just moved where that was starting to bend further that way which has given me a tighter radius which is now 
um, much closer to what was there originally. So I'm going to mark off the width of that channel and then see if I can bend it up the other way. Well, I kind of ballsed it up and ended up with that section there. Too high or too long. So what I had to do was put it over the heel of, or whatever that bit is, and then beat it with a hammer to kind of stretched it out. So now I've got something fairly decent. That trough is a bit narrow, but it doesn't really matter because um, all of this is under the engine bay, so you don't see it. And the only sort of critical distance is from the inside face of that to that, because there's a rubber seal and then some grills, but it's all fairly, you know, easy to move about afterwards if I really need to. My only regret is not having made that longer, because now I've been able to actually do that sort of complex curve thing. I could have done the whole front edge in one uniform length, whereas now I'm going to have to weld it to the gold panel um, and to the car, and it will probably need a bit of filler in it where the transition is between original and this. So it would have been nice to do it in one length, but my fold is just not long enough. So back out to the car for a bit of a test fit. That's the gold panel sitting on those little shelf bits I made. So that all lines up nicely. And there's my new donor piece. Uh, where are we? Try and get the light. Back. So it's pretty damn close. It'll just need some final dressing. And again, I'll probably drill all the plug weld holes in this uh, inside and then bring it out and weld it in afterwards. And I'll just need to, now I know I'm not going to save it, I'll just take the rest of that flange off. And then where there is that transition, I'll just have to be neat with the filler. I haven't trimmed that off yet. This is all, you know, not required. Um, I might actually leave it long until I weld it in. Because if you imagine you've got two, piece, two thin pieces that are butted up against each other, when you weld up to the top, it always burns back into the hole. Whereas if I leave this long, I can weld up onto that and then chop it off and sand it all flat afterwards. So it just saves having a piece of copper or some other sort of heat sink to stop burning through. But yeah, that'll be for another time. I might go home now because I'm bored or I might get the fuel tank out. I can't really decide. Right, I am gonna chop the fuel tank out. I say chop, I've really only got one bolt to chop, the rest are all loose. Hopefully, uh, when that gets cut off with Mr Grinder, it doesn't just drop on the floor and spill diesel everywhere, so I've got my catch tank thing underneath, and um, yeah. It'd be interesting to see how rusty this tank is, because you can't get diesel fuel tanks anymore, and the chances of finding one second hand are basically nil. Um, so I'm hoping it's all good because I don't want to either have to send it away to a specialist to get welded up or do it myself. So yeah, fingers crossed it's okay. Fuel tank out, looking pretty good. Um, on the other tanks I've had, they've rusted out where these pipes go on. This one looks really solid. They always look a bit frilly around the seams because I don't think they get protected very well there. Top side's good, no big holes. The sender, miraculously the um, fuel gauge is actually working and it turns out it was quite accurate so that's good that'll just need a good cleaning up so plan is just to when I get an opportunity take it back to my dad's garage give it a good old rub down and then um, epoxy it then cover the top side in dinitrol or something and then shove it back in the car got a lot more space under the car now to work um, so yep yeah, that's all good encouraging just need more time, more dry evenings.